purpose of this video is to cover a newer type of method for estimating reliability. So it's not a method in and of itself, but it's a different statistical procedure that can be used in place of correlation uh, when doing all the different forms of reliability that we covered in class. This, is, this uses what's called analysis of variance as a statistical procedure, and we'll get into that as I move through this presentation. Many current researchers suggest that the methods that had been that we presented in class are using statistical methods are really outdated um, and should now be using interclass reliability. That concept is a little bit extreme, however, there is a statistical explanation for it. Before we explain what the statistical explanation for it is, I have to tell you a little bit about an ANOVA analysis of variance. It is like a t-test, except for it measures mean differences between more than two groups. So when we did t-tests, we were always limited to two groups, an independent variable that had two groups. In um, ANOVA, we, have, we can either do one or more independent variables. We can have multiple independent variables. They're all going to be nominal, just like t-tests. Um, but we can uh, have independent variables that have three groups, four groups, etc. By it also has the ability to, yeah, as I stated before, have multiple independent variables at a time. This allows a little bit more variability in what we can do in terms of assessing reliability. So, interclass reliability is an alternative method to statistically analyzing reliability as opposed to correlation. And there are three major reasons why people believe that interclass reliability or an ICC, an interclass coefficient, is a better reason. I would strongly encourage you to know these three reasons. The first one is that reliability situations are univariate rather than bivariate. I'm going to just move this up here to the left. In bivariate correlation, we always looked at it as an XY plot, and we were looking for the correlations to be going strong positive, and that's how we discussed it in class. However, Whenever we're doing um, test or like test retest, what we're really looking at is that the same y variable, but it's measured at time one and time two. So instead of looking at a scatter plot, what we're really measuring is two different means or two different bars, not a scattering of data sets. Um, therefore, we should be using a statistical approach that's more appropriate there, in which case, a uh, univariate approach such as an ANOVA is more appropriate than a bivariate approach of such as correlation. I'm going to again move this up to the right. The second reason is that all sources of variability can be assessed. In correlation, we can only ever measure an XY variable at one time. However, like I said, with ANOVA, you can put more than one variable into the analysis at once. You can have more than two levels. You can have a variety of different ways. So we could look at test retest. We could look at um, day to day, trial to trial, um, test administrator, test or um, interrater reliability, and do them all at the same time, where correlation can only do one at a time and require you to do many correlations. Every time you do an extra analysis, it actually is going to increase the chance you commit type 1 error and potentially say that the test is inconsistent when it actually is. The third reason is that one of the major things that you can't do in correlation, but you can in analysis of variance, is look at statistically significant mean gains. If a test showed mean gains, that would suggest that it really wasn't consistent whatsoever. You could see, for instance, if this is day one and this is day two, and there was a significant increase from day one to day two, that would suggest a unreliable test, or at least a lot less reliable test. However, in correlation, when you're just looking at a scattering of dots, it does not tell you if you have differences between day one and day two in terms of mean gains. And that's a pretty important aspect. So just to see an example, here the purpose of interclass reliability for using with multiple trials, test administrators, um, or test administrations. It's a newer procedure used opposed to the previously described correlational procedures where x variable is whatever type, so raters, trials, days, our y variables, the score on the new test, and instead we're going to use ANOVA and 
what's going to be presented as an ICC or sometimes just an R coefficient. So the researcher has developed a new vertical jump test with multiple trials that is administered on more than one day. The researcher must use interclass reliability because we have two sources of variability, trials and days. And the researcher conducts the appropriate measure or measures, repeated measures factorial NOVA to assess the interclass reliability estimate. If the test is reliable, then no significant mean difference would be revealed. Then the interclass reliability estimate or the ICC will be calculated. If a significant mean difference is revealed, then the researcher should examine the data to figure out where the consistency issues are and see if fewer trials would help. So where does this reliability or this ICC come from? Interclass reliability uses ANOVA pre presents an ICC as the reliability inst or assessment. The ICC is scored in the same way that a correlation is scored so that the numbers can be interpreted similarly. In a couple of classes, we'll look at how we interpret numbers and estimates of reliability and validity. But where this f comes from is from what we call classical test theory. And so classical test theory suggests that any obtained score, any x value, is an estimate of a person's true score plus some measurement error, because we assume that their error will always exist in any type of measurement. This reliability estimate, or the ICC, that you will see put in the literature, is calculated by putting the reference of a true score over an obtained score. Now, as you can see, to get a true score, we, we, don't, we can't actually ever truly measure a true score. However, we can estimate it. And that estimation is already presented here for us as the true score plus error. So the obtained score rec represents the actual score on the measurement. The true score is the hypothetical score that exists if the researcher were able to make the measurement with no error, and then the error score represents the component of the measurement that was inaccurate. Remember, your error in measurement may be positive or negative as you may either go overestimate or underestimate. Although interclass reliability methods use NOVA as a statistical procedure, the ICC is still calculated and reported. So this finishes it up. However, the analysis of variance procedure true score can't be estimated, but the error score and obtained score variability are, and the true score is going to be given as a result of obtained minus error. Thus, the actual formula, once written out completely, is obtained minus error over obtained. I don't need you to know the formulas necessarily, but I do need you to know the reasons and understand why, or understand that this replaces correlation as the most acceptable form of reporting most formats of reliability.